Okay, now that we've deleted all the geometry, the next thing I'm going to do is you just want to, if you haven't done this already, go up here and select Stop Sketch. And then you'll see we basically have this empty sketch now. You can either delete it, turn off its visibility by selecting the little light bulb. We don't really want, we don't really need that right now. We're going to go ahead and create a new sketch. So I'll come into the sketch menu, create sketch, and again I'm going to select that front plane. So for this sketch, we're going to be creating something a little bit more complicated. It's going to be the rocker arm for a rear suspension on a mountain bike. And we're going to introduce some new techniques and do a little bit more complicated sketch that we're going to use in a few of the other parts and some of the other tutorials here for Fusion 360. So I'm going to start by coming in and selecting uh, the same circle center diameter tool. And what's important here is we want to have kind of an anchor point. You'll notice when you create a new sketch, you get a point right there on the origin, and that's always going to be locked to kind of the zero, zero point of this model. So what I want to do is I want to hover over that, select that point, and make sure I have that point locked in as the first point of my circle. Another nice trick here you'll know is, is that as I drag this, I can drag it and, pl and place it, but as I'm dragging, it's giving me kind of an indicator of the size. I could actually specify a specific size and just type in a value right now. But sometimes even if you're not ready to do that, what's nice is just to know roughly where you are. So I know I'm going to want this to be around 30 something millimeters. So I'll just make sure that as I start my sketch, I'm at least in like the right order of magnitude. So 30 something millimeters. Now I know kind of uh, that's about the size that I need. And later we're going to add dimensions that will lock the size in. But at least I know I'm kind of close. Um, all right, so I've done that. Now I'm going to create another circle. So we'll just kind of, again, just sort of float this one up in space, something like this. Not worried about being too precise just yet. So now, again, I can just select the line right from the top of the toolbar. So I'll select my line tool. And now what I want to do, again, is I want to make sure that I snap to that geometry. Notice how the cursor changes a little bit as I roll over the circle. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap there and then there. So now I've got these two lines and you'll see and then if you press escape to end the end the command. So now if I drag this you can see kind of the behavior everything's sort of locked together. You can see that I even act automatically created this tangent relationship but we'll talk about that more in a minute. Okay so the next command I'm going to introduce is called a fillet. So a fillet basically puts an arc at the hard corner between two lines. So I'll select fillet and then the prompt is to pick this corner. So I'll select the corner, and then I'm prompted to type in a radius. I'll give it 10, hit enter to complete the command. And again, you'll see I get, so now I have the dimension of it, as well as these two tangent relationships that will be maintained regardless of how I drag things around. Okay, so there's another way that I could create something very similar. So here I created line, line, then went back and created a fillet. Another nice tool or workflow in here is if I create my first line, so when I when I end the line command, instead of just clicking the left mouse button, I'm actually going to click it and then hold it down, and keeping the left mouse button pressed down will actually put me into an arc, and then when I let go of that, it ends the arc, and then I I'm back into the line command, and I can snap to the other circle and you can see now again we've got a closed contour. So that's a really useful command and I use it all the time. It's something that you'll find very useful as you're just sketching out shapes to be able to kind of transition from a line to an arc uh, on the fly as you go. Okay so you can see um, you know in some of these cases and especially in that case it automatically creates the tangency for me from the line to the arc when I drag it out and we also got automatic here and I got one here as well and as you use the software more you'll realize it if you depending on how you actually are mouse is positioned as you select the circle I could have forced this tangency in a few of these other places but I uh, it's really something that you just get used to as you're using the software but I'm gonna come in and explicitly create those constraints so we'll go ahead come in here, I'm going to select the two lines, so again on the Mac, hold down Shift and select the two, in Windows it would be Control, and I've got these two lines, the line and the circle selected, I'm going to add a tangency relationship, I'll do the same thing here and here, tangent, here, 
in here. Notice I always just use this little heads up. In that heads up, it's only going to present you the options that actually make sense, right? These are the only things that make sense between a line and a circle. There's no concept of a collinear between a line and a circle, for example. So you can just quickly get to the tangency. So if you had some that were already created, you might not have to create all of them, but in the end, you should see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tangencies. So all of all the way around, all the lines and arcs should be tangent to each other. And when we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and say OK. So now what I'm going to do is add some dimensions. So again, I'll go in here to my dimension command. The first thing I'm going to do is dimension the arcs. So I'll select the that arc, this one, and then the right circle. And once I've placed all these dimensions, now I can go back and edit their values. So we have some pretty specific values here just because this is going to integrate with a bunch of other parts on the bike. So we'll go ahead and type these in. Uh, this is going to be 31 millimeters. This radius here is going to be 30. And this diameter here is going to be 20. Notice the difference that I've got here, which is that when I have the little diameter symbol, that's 20, and then this radius is 30, right? So radius 30 is actually a 60 millimeter diameter arc. And so if things kind of move around on you a little bit, you can always just drag drag around to get kind of roughly back into the shape you want. Um, this sketcher is basically trying to look at the dimensions and relationships that you've applied and then figure out a solution to that. So sometimes things will move around a little bit, but you can always just drag it back and of course your dimensions that you've applied will stay uh, constant. So again, because we don't want that to happen, what we're going to do is we're going to what we call fully define this sketch and we're going to create dimensions that fully kind of lock this thing down. So um, again, I'm going to come back into my dimension command and I'm going to create a dimension between the center point of this and the center point of this. And you'll see that depending on how I drag my cursor, so I can drag this thing uh, over here, I get, see the vertical dimension, and if I drag it this way, I get the horizontal dimension, and if I drag it, uh, I can also create a direct point-to-point -point dimension. I'm going to go ahead and just create this vertical dimension, and then I'll create another dimension horizontal. So again, it depends on where your mouse is located at when you're dragging these things around. It's going to depend on where the dimension actually gets placed. So that looks good. Maybe I'll zoom out just a bit here. So now I'm just going to repeat the process. So again, if you had escaped the dimension command, you could do it again. Otherwise, you should still be in it. And now I'm going to go ahead and create the dimension from this point to here. this point to this point. And again, so I basically want the horizontal and vertical dimension between all of these different circles. And again, this is the point of having my first circle centered on the origin. It gives me that base point to create all these dimensions from. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type in all the very specific values Sometimes you'll find that there's a certain order that you can change the dimensions in that'll actually make the sketch behave the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type these all in. So if you're working from the, uh, from the manual, you'll see all these values. Otherwise, you can kind of get them from watching this video. So let me just quickly type in all these values. point. 181 86.12 40.367 40 so this is obviously some very precise geometry that was like very specifically designed to integrate with the rest of the components on the bike and so we already know what these values need to be. A lot of times what you'd really find in reality when you're designing is that 
these sorts of relationships will sort of come together based on the other parts in your assemblies. But for now, we're just going to go ahead, type all those values in, and uh, be good to go. So at this point, uh, we have completed our sketch. I'm pretty happy with that. So now once the sketch is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Stop Sketch. And this now completes it. So one of the nice things is it's going to hide all those constraints and dimensions from you. And now you're just looking at your sketch in space. If you come up here to your view cube and you kind of you can click around onto different uh, areas and you can click up into the corner and that'll give you this kind of isometric view. So now I'm actually looking at this in 3D. And I'm going to create some quick geometry here just so I can show a couple more concepts. We'll talk more about this in the modeling lesson. But for now, just go ahead and click your press pull button and I'm going to select all three of those areas or contours inside of the sketch and then we're going to go ahead and extrude this out to a specific value. So we'll say 48.25 and I'll press enter and now I've got some geometry. So typically when you're creating a sketch it's because you're going to use it to create geometry with. Now we've got something extruded to begin the shape of our uh, rocker arm. So I do this because I want to point out another very important technique when sketching and that is if I come in here and I create a new sketch instead of selecting one of those default planes this time I might want to sketch on a model face. So here we've got this model and I'm going to select this face and this is the face that my plane is going to be created on. So now I'm actually sketching on this face of the model. And one of the things that's nice when I do that is, is that I'm going to automatically pick up some references to all the edges around the perimeter of this face. You can see I don't even have to look normal. I can just start sketching. I can come in here, I can say circle, center diameter circle. And then you notice when I roll, when I hover over these points, I get a snap. So it's snapping to the center. I can go ahead and snap right to that point and then drag it out. Here's that technique I was showing you before I was talking about before. If I actually just type in 10 right now and hit enter, it's going to lock that in at 10, which is a pretty nice little way of doing these if you just want to specify a size. Otherwise, you could come in and you could say the old-fashioned way, create sketch dimension and apply the dimension there, but you can see I actually already have that 10 applied. Let's go ahead and create the other two circles. Create the first one here, and again another one here. So notice that I'm actually creating the circles in the plane because that's the plane that I'm sketching on, right? If I click to my front view, you can see I can see it a lot better now. I can see again, I can see that 10 dimension already applied, and I can see these two new circles that I've created. Maybe I want to go create some dimensions for them. Again, select the two, press escape to exit the command, and then give them the values that we want. So now I've created this nice sketch, and now I know that if I go back and I make changes to that underlying sketch, these are constrained to that point. So that means that if my base feature changes and moves the position of this point because of this arc, then the hole is going to follow it. And that's one of the really important things when you're working in kind of a history mode parametric modeling solution is that you're going to want to create these relationships so that as one part of your design changes, the rest follows. All right. So now that we've finished this sketch, we'll go ahead and again press stop sketch to exit the sketch. And if you want, you can come in and do this one more time. Go into the press pull command. Again, you can select these three circles. And you could either change this value yourself. You can actually drag this. I could drag this this way. If I drag it into the model, it's going to assume that I want to create a cut. So you can see here I have the option to say cut, join, intersect, etc. I'm going to do a cut. I can also even come in here and say I just want to cut through all. So again, that's a command you'll find yourself using a lot which is you take your sketch, cut through all, and here we go. We've got some geometry. So this is just like a very basic introduction to sketching and a couple of little model fe modeling features. Uh, as you go through some of the future tutorials, you'll see 
uh, this model specifically get more developed and we'll add a few more features to it that show off some of the other ways that you can create geometry in Fusion. But for now, that's the end of sketching. Thank you very much.